and nine. Okay, eight, seven. Awesome, we're getting attacked. This is exactly how we want it. Welcome back. This tutorial will go over how you could set up a game controller to control all of your stats for easy reference and manipulation from power-up items. Or whatever else you'd like. So I'm going to jump straight into it. I'm going to create a C Sharp script called game controller. Okay. Now if we open this up in Visual Studio Code. I just drag that in. All right, I'll expand it out a little bit. Okay. So, um, the first thing we want to do is I'm going to make an instance of this class. Okay. And this is going to be static. So, we're going to be able to um, use this and keep our stats. Um, to one value without re-replicating them because we only want the stats to be initialized once. So I'm going to create a public static game controller and I'm going to call it instance. Okay. And the first thing that I'm going to do is instead of a start void, I'm going to use an awake void. Okay. So as soon as this is awake, I'm going to check if our instance is equal to null, okay? And if it is, I'm going to set the instance equal to this script, okay? So it's going to be equal to itself. So it's instantiated and we don't want to be calling it from anywhere else. Now, the next thing I want to do is uh, create some variables that we want to change around. So. These are going to be private and only be able to uh, be changed through the game controller. So firstly, I'm going to create a private integer. I'm going to call it health. Okay. That is probably all I want for now. Um, we can probably edit some other stats later. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to be able to look at these from other scripts because if we want maybe a health bar, um, to show our health um, right now we can't access it because they're all private so to create a public static accessible um, variables for all these values um, simply I'm just going to basically rewrite these but um, we're going to be able to use the get and set uh, for them so I'm going to do a public static int I'm going to call it health okay it's got a capital H and in here I'm going to get our health okay and we're going to set our health equal to value okay just like so and this is going to be lowercase okay Perfect. So an object reference is required. Game controller dot health. Okay. Um that shouldn't matter too much at this stage. Let's just go and create the other ones. So I'm gonna create a public static integer. I'm gonna call it max health. Okay, we're going to get our max health and I'm going to set our max health equal to the value. Okay. Okay. So I'm actually going to do basically the same thing. Okay, but this time it's obviously going to be move speed with a capital M. Move speed, get 
move speed set move speed to value okay it's gonna be a float and same goes for here so float uh, fire rate Okay, so, whoop. so, um, once we have this set up and we have our instance set up, um, we can go ahead and create some basic uh, methods that we can use. So, we probably want to have one to damage the player, uh, one to heal the player, um, and that's probably all we need for now. Okay, so I'm going to create a public static void. I'm gonna call it damage player. Okay, and we're gonna take in some damage because we don't exactly know what sort of damage we wanna take in right now. So we can just call it through when we need to use it. We're gonna make our health minus equal to the damage, okay. And we're going to check uh, if health is less than or equal to zero, then we probably want to kill the player. Okay. Probably need uh, a method for that as well. So I'm going to also going to create a public static void heal player. Okay. And I'm going to take in an integer, the heal amount, okay. So we're going to set the health equal to mathf.min and I'm going to grab the maximum health. Uh, make sure these are lowercase, okay. I will fix this in just a moment, but we're going to make sure it's lowercase and I'm going to grab the health plus the heal amount okay I'm also just gonna quickly create a or probably a private static whoops private static void kill player okay perfect so um we probably want to define We've defined these, but we need to initialize them with some vari variables. So maybe I'll set this to 10. Set this to 10. Set this to 5. And set this to 0.5f. Okay. Now if we save that. So it's saying an object reference is required for the non-static field. GameController.health. Okay. So that would be because we haven't set these to static. So make sure these are static. I don't know why I didn't do that before. Must be a bit tired or something. All right. So we set these and we go back in. Should be perfect. Uh, there's a couple of um, warnings, but we don't need to worry about those for now. Now. If I go and create an empty game object, just reset its values, and I'll call it the game controller, okay? And I'm gonna add a game controller script to it. Cool. So now we can access these wherever we'd like. So if I go ahead and create um, an empty text, okay? I'll just call this like health text, okay? And be like health zero. Um, okay, see where it is here. Probably just gonna drag it out. Oop. Put it in the middle. Put it up to like 24 or something. Okay. Now.
Okay, so we have this, but we need to reference it somewhere. Maybe we need to, when we update the health in our game controller, when we heal the player, um, maybe we need to update the health text. So to do that, uh, we can just do using Unity Engine dot UI. Okay, and when we damage or heal the player. We are going to update the health stat, okay? So we can just have a, whoop, we can have a private um, static text and I'm gonna call it health text, okay? We can just update our health within our update function. So health.text is gonna equal to health plus health. If the enemy touches us, um, we want to be able to get damaged. So, um, since this isn't a trigger and we have a non-trigger here, we can set the enemy to a trigger and inside of our enemy controller, okay, we can um, update some of the code to make it damage us, okay? So, we can say in our update function, we can say if uh, our vector three dot distance from us to our player, okay, oops, that's the dot position. Um, if this is less than or equal to, not our range, but we probably want a value. So if it's less than or equal to 0.5F, okay. Now we can call this attacking range, okay. So up here, we can just create a public float attacking range. So we can edit that in the future. Not attacking or just attack my bad. So if it's less than or equal to our attack range, um, then we can call an enemy state dot attack. So our current state is going to equal to enemy state dot attack. Okay. But we haven't actually defined that. So if we go back up and we define an attack. Okay. Now we can also add a case here. So we can do case enemy state state dot attack. Okay, then we can call um, attack. And then break. Let's not call attack range. I don't know why it auto filled that. There we go. So if we scroll down, we have our follow just under here, void attack. Okay. So we can simply call a game controller dot damage player. Okay. And the damage amount, we can just do one. Okay. So if it's within range, then we're going to damage the player and we probably want to put a cooldown on that as well. So we can have a Boolean vari variable. Okay. We could have a private ball, um, we'll probably call it uh, cooldown attack, okay, set that equal to false. And we can also have a public float and I will call that cooldown, okay. so. If we go back into here, um, we need to do an if statement. We can say if we're not calling down our attack, okay, uh, then we simply want to damage the player. And once we damage the player, um, we probably want to start our cooldown. So we could start a coroutine and we'll call it cooldown. Okay. 
and maybe that'll uh yeah so we can just start our cooldown and we can have a private ie numerator oops numerator cool down okay and we're going to set cooldown attack equal to true okay and then we're gonna wait for seconds so yield return new wait for seconds and we're gonna wait for our cooldown okay and once we've waited for it then we will set cooldown attack equal to false sweet so all right so back in our editor we want to have an attack range so we can set this to one uh, we can also set the cooldown to maybe two okay so if we save that and run the game now should start the game and nine okay eight seven awesome we're getting attacked this is exactly how we wanted it this should give you a basic um, understanding of how to set up a sort of game controller to be able to edit stats um, in a future video I will probably go over um, since we've already gone over collecting items and updating our UI we probably want to implement a item system uh, to create many types of items to be able to collect and upgrade our stats so yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this and uh, leave a like and a comment if you did and make sure to subscribe. I will see you guys next time.